Dang, Dan. Dang, Dan. Yeah. Damn, boy. <laughs> you want to clear corona. your throat out and start over? <clears throat> Gosh. You all right? It's like corona. It is, yeah. You probably got it. Dang, Dan. Remember that, uh, was it a vine, that kid, Daniel, that wore white shoes all the time in high school and people said, damn, Daniel, all the time? I you think he's still it. out there wearing white shoes? Oh, for sure. For good sure. for him. Yeah, good for him, it's right? It's a weird way to start a show, but it is. why not? It is. Why not? You know, I, I do think one thing that I would, I felt like I wanted the show to, maybe we just do it on our swipe ups, the background music for the swipe up photo. Right. <clears throat> I want it to be like uh, playing that song, This Is The Moment You've All Been Waiting For. Uh, can you sing it for me? Because I'm not familiar with that song. <laughs> no, you're familiar. I have no idea what you're talking about. You have no, Hold I bet on. Giorgio knows. Giorgio, you know that song? This is the moment we've all been waiting for. I'm looking for. it up by uh, someone. I have no idea. No, I don't. This is a song you said? I'm going to, I'm going to, yeah. I have no idea what you're talking about. And I don't know why we're even talking about this. By the way, our theme song, the one that leads into this show uh, on the audio and video uh, show is uh, written by Danny Worsnot, by the way. Sometime uh, from asking Alexander, sometime within the next 18 to 24 months, it's going to be an actual song that'll be out. And based on his track record, it'll probably be a very popular song because uh, he's a great writer. So thanks, Danny Horstomp, for yeah, that. Yeah, thanks so much, Danny. Yeah. How'd, you, how'd you get him to do that? Y'all had the same name? I just asked him. Really? Yeah, it's kind of, uh, we're very privileged sometimes. Or you could just call a literal rock star and be like, hey, could you write a jingle for me, man, for my little show? Like, he's like, yeah, give me a couple hours. I'm like, oh, cool. I it was kind of half tongue in cheek, but he likes doing that stuff. He's, he's one of those guys that likes to help other people. He's, uh, he's, he's, a lot, he's more American than a lot of naturally born American citizens that I know. That's badass, man. And he lives in Florida, too. So I think he's uh, slowly slipping down the, uh, <laughs> the ladder on those rungs in Florida, you know what I mean? It's like you start out as an upstanding citizen and all of a sudden you're on meth wrestling crocodiles or alligators or whatever's down there, I don't know. That shit um, happens, man. It does, yeah. It happens to the best of us. Well, you just gotta stay Did tight. you ever start at the top of the rung? No. Yeah. No, I, I, just, I walked up to the ladder, tripped on the way up there, fell and put my head through the first three, right? So the ladder was shaky after that, pretty yeah. much the whole way up. Yeah. Once I got up there, I was airboards, I just jumped. You know what I mean? I didn't know what else to do. Yeah, Hua? No. Who? We're n- Gosh, don't don't I mean, ever say that. I mean, airborne, right? Do you? I think. I think. Oh, um, man. Mm. I think you need to say airborne every show now. You're the one that's uh, business partners with Jocko. You want to talk about somebody being motivated? I'm not motivated. Look at me. I'm like Eeyore. Bro, you motivate me. No. You motivate me. I'm barely conscious right now. Well, you know, listen. Um, thank you for your service. So, uh, man, we we launched our first episode this week. And uh, people seem to like it. Mm-hmm. People seem yeah. to like it. We're getting a lot of good responses. I like, um, you know, I like getting, I like putting that stuff out into the ecosystem and just kind of seeing how people respond and what they find important and not important, right? Yeah. I think it's, uh, I think it's a good thing for us to be able to learn because that's kind of what this show is about, is bouncing things off of people and uh, having an open dialogue. And, you know, just to get into that point, we want to reiterate that, This isn't, the American party isn't a new political party. It's meant to be kind of a rejection of the idea of uh, political parties in general and and of binary politics, especially. Kind of like what the Tea Party did in the beginning, not the new Tea Party. Right. But like what the, like, like basically we are, we're kind of like where the guys just jumped on the ship, grabbed the tea and threw his shit out in the harbor. That's kind of where we're at, right? Right. Yeah. And if, uh, you know, You've got to stop short. Anytime, the, the problem in maybe not even modern politics, maybe just in the idea of politics in general, maybe it's part of human psychology just to escalate things. Like one side does this, so you have to show appropriate response. Otherwise, you look weak to your base and you weaken their resolve to come out and vote for you or blah, blah, blah. There's all this stuff going on. But at the end of the day, we should all be focused less on winning elections and uh, more on winning for the country, I think, right? And yeah. that's what this is all about. The American Party, everybody's a part of it just by being born. Yeah, you're already you born a part in this of country, it. you're a part of it. You don't have to sign up for anything, you don't have to believe anything. All you have to believe is that you owe as much to this country as you expect out of it. And you should always believe that about anything that's in it. life. Um, 
The only rule is follow the truth and do what's best for America. That's all I expect out of people. That's it. And I think that's pretty simple. Yeah, but just because it's simple doesn't mean it's easy. No, it's certainly not easy. And look, we're all, everybody from time to time is going to get caught up in their own bullshit. You know, people, we're, we're, I say this all the time, but we're always wrong until we're right. And that process of being wrong in public and getting called out for it, you know, in a way that's constructive, preferably, and then, you know, adjusting from there is a super important process. And, and some of these leaders that we have now, if you want to call them leaders, could really demonstrate uh, some real leadership by doing that, by saying, you know what, I was wrong about that. Yeah. I mean, I, I think, um, look, the way I try to live life and the reason that I, the American party is just, it's so simple, but the way I try to live life is that when I die, when mm. I, when I, when I am put, uh, when I am stuffed, when I'm taken to a taxidermist and I'm stuffed, is that what I'm, you're going to do? And I'm brought, like, I want to be, you know, just real quick for this image. I want to be sitting like in a sitting position with my hands like this, but I want my pinkies down so that I can so you can put beer in there. Oh, you want kung fu grip? Like, well, no, I want like to hold. Like a GI Joe. But I want to hold your beers. I'm going to be a chair. Mm. Yeah, and you can sit in my lap. What if we freeze you and make it into an ice luge, and we just pour booze down your body and then drink it out? Well, the, the only bottom. way I would do that is if you you made it through my back. Yeah, like of down course. The arch of my it back. has to be. Yeah, it's, I would turn my head like this, yeah. and then yeah, you'd have to get it wherever the best yeah. positioning was. And you guys can just visualize that now. I'll give you a few seconds to. to um, but for me, yep. like when I die. I just want to know that I gave back and I put into this country uh, what I took from it. Right. It's pre- it's a pretty simple, pretty simple way. And I think like you go through phases of where you have to take more. Right. Um, but then you go through phases where you can give more. Right. And I think right, it's course, just. Yeah. I think it's just. A, 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 I think it's just being conscious of the way you live with this country. And I think the yeah. the only thing that's worse than not believe it, it, than than believing the wrong thing is not believing anything. Um, yeah, I mean, you've got to you got to have some kind of purpose and it doesn't necessarily have to be some prescribed uh, uh, set of rules or, or any kind of stuff like that. It's just got to be something like you can just decide every day that you want to. I hear a lot of people these days. I think we've moved from a culture of leave things better than you found it, which was, you know, the Boy Scouts teach that the military teaches it a yeah. lot of places. Not that I'm a fan necessarily of some of the shit the Boy Scouts do, but it's those life skills like that and just teaching people to be, to think of others before themselves. That's a really important lesson to learn early in life. And to, to as an infantryman, you know that if you're not improving, then you're losing because the enemy's always out there improving. If you're not, like, if you're in a fighting position for 10 minutes, you take a knee. If you're in a fighting position for an hour, you start fucking get, finding cover, you build whatever, you know, exponentially as the yeah. longer as you, longer you're always you stay getting there. better. Yeah. You're always trying to improve your fighting position. And not that I live my life by all a bunch of, uh, infantry ethos or anything like that, but I think that's a really good one to live your life by. If you're not moving forward, then you're moving backwards because everybody else is moving forward. And we as a country can't afford to do that. Now people are moving in a direction now where it's, it's either, well, that's how I found it. Or they make some excuse for not doing their part, right? There's, yeah. there's no real personal accountability in life anymore. So, you know, I feel like one of the most important lessons that you can learn individually and that you can pass on to your friends, family, and children and all that stuff is to try to leave things better than you found them. Not just, you know, cleaning up after yourself, but leave people that you meet better off than you found them. That's a big thing. Leave the political discourse better off than you found it. Don't contribute bullshit, even if you think it's all stupid. Yeah, you know, I mean, you, why why be toxic? Why 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 shit all over it? You know what I mean? We're not we're not here. This this show is not about talking about how bad Democrats and Republicans are. It's about talking about what solu- actual solutions to actual problems. That's the point. Yeah, I mean, I think like we just got to stop. There's a difference between um, bitching and reasoning, mm-hmm. right? Like bitching is when you come and and, or bitching and trying to make things better. Bitching is when you come and just name the problem and just bitch about the problem. Right. But like, you know, trying to make things better. You, I mean, you, you have to be willing to come up with a solution. Right. And I think if you can't come up with a solution or you're not willing to be the solution, then you shouldn't be allowed to bitch either. No, I mean, you, you know, it's, you, you, do, you do buy some currency for yourself by taking active role and making things better or just getting involved. Who knows if you're going to make them better or worse. Um, so that's why this week 
it's one of the things that I wanted to push with this show from the very beginning this week, and you talked about it, I believe, on uh, another episode. We want to start um, making sure that the audience is involved in this because it's not just about two, the two of us having a conversation and people listening in. It's about getting a larger community that is definitely displaced right now, people that feel like they don't have a home politically. Absolutely. And it's about getting them involved in an ongoing discourse to do two things. One, expose bad ideas. And then two, you know, start a discourse that could possibly, hopefully lead to better ideas and solutions, right? So one of the questions we got this week was from uh, Jake Johnson, which is a very, it's a manly name. It I is. feel like Jake Johnson could chop down a tree. Yeah, and, I wouldn't and, mess with him. And fix, uh, fix my engine. Uh, he wants to know, what would you expect to happen if Trump wins in these four more years of Trump? And then conversely, what, will you, what do you think is going to happen if the Dems win, uh, if Biden wins? And what would you think if they also flip the Senate, which means it would have control of both houses plus the presidency? So we can start with uh, President Trump. What do you think is going to happen if he wins? Uh, I mean, look, I, I, think, uh, I think if President Trump wins, I think, look, I think the country is going to stay. You're going you're gonna to keep having the left come and, and just bringing up more issues, right? I think the good part is, is they've already got most of the shit that was halfway going to stick. And, mm. and I think, you know, I think they've ran out of their, their uh, street cred, basically, right. with anything that's going to be, I mean, what else can you bring up? He, he couldn't have done shit in the last four years while he's up there being president, right? No, no, so no. I, think, <clears throat> I think there's that. I mean, even if, even if he did, unless it was like treason or something like that, to bring up charges on a sitting president, it would have to be something like that. And because yeah. otherwise, if it's just criminal charges, he can invoke executive privilege and they would never get near him. It had to be something from before. Yeah. So, right. so I mean, I think we're past that. But yeah. I, I do think, look, I think that if Donald Trump gets reelected, I don't think that the, the mass thing ends and the coronavirus thing no. dies off as fast as it would be if the Democrats got elected. Right. And that's a that's a political game. You know, <clears throat> let's be real honest about that. Um, one, you're right, and you said it on, I think, I don't know if it was episode one or episode two you said that, but um, definitely if Biden wins, the left, if they're still in control of all these states, the they're going they're gonna, to have to start getting rid of that stuff and the shutdowns and everything regardless of what the outcome is because unless, unless they're okay with the idea of in the midterm election in 2022 pleading that we didn't have control of the economy or it was still Trump's economy or we had COVID and we couldn't build it better. I don't think they'll be okay with that. I think they'll start to open up uh, if Biden wins for sure. But uh, if Trump wins, they're definitely going to stay closed. And yep. it won't be based on science or any of that stuff. I mean, we've seen plenty of uh, research now that shows one. I don't know why it was ever in question whether or not this stuff uh, was, was super viral. I don't think anybody legitimate was ever questioning that because that was pretty clear from the beginning it was also clear that young people weren't that affected by it and people that are obese or old or have pre-existing conditions are now that's pretty much any virus because that's how a virus works right um including uh like hiv you don't die from hiv you die from like pneumonia or complications because it weakens your immune system right and yeah. it happens with any of this stuff so of course those people are going to be at greater risk now anyways <clears throat> if if trump does win i expect to see uh, unprecedented levels of obstruction from th particularly from house Democrats. Uh, I don't think they're going to let anything pass anything at all. I don't think, and it's going to be reminiscent of halfway through Obama's term through like that four year period, the first two years of his last, uh, so 16 and 17 and, uh, and, uh, I'm sorry, not 16 to 17, uh, 2000, 2010 through 2013 or 14, the do nothing Congress that everybody remembers that phrase uh, that the left concocted. And, you know, they were right about it. They spent the main Republican effort. One, I mean, Mitch McConnell came out and said it. Our, our number one goal right now is to make sure Barack Obama doesn't get a second term. That's what he said when people asked him what his goal was for the next four years after Obama got elected. That is bullshit, by the way. You're a fucking the ranking senator yeah. in the U.S. Senate. That's your goal? And that your goal is not to make the country better. It's to get rid of Barack Obama. That's that's asinine, and and uh, to be honest, that guy's uh, th that's a real piece of shit thing to say. Yeah. But again, it's playing politics, and yeah. it's the same thing with the left. When they open up the country, if Biden wins, uh, or keep it closed because Trump wins, they see that as a legitimate political tactic. I think personally, anything that harms the American public in any way is should be completely off the table. Like if you have to make a decision 
between getting reelected, maintaining your career, and doing stuff that hurts actual American people, and you choose to, to stay in power, you didn't deserve that power in the first place. Let, let's talk about this. Like, I, I love what you're saying. You know, you know what I have a real problem with is um, when you have these guys who run for president mm. while they're in Congress right. and they still get paid to do their job in Congress right. while they're going out and running for president. I have a real problem with that. Yeah, that's uh, like they, mm. their job is full time there to be there and, and, and doing their job. They're getting paid by American tax dollars right. and they're running for for Congress. Yeah, but I mean, that's pretty much every sitting election. And I think the idea that the House turns over every two years is kind of weird. I, mean, I, I think that whatever day you're out, mm. you're out, you're not in your district and you're like whatever day that you're out and you're can't your, your focus is on your campaign for presidency. You shouldn't be able to get paid that day. Uh, yeah, I mean, it would <laughs> look. I would love to see prorated congressional pay. Let's be real about right? that. I'm not sure how many days a, a year they work, but it's definitely not as many as I do. Um, and you know, the idea that you could go make an executive level salary as a P, like if you think about the the United States government as a corporate structure, how many people that are 400th down the list are making 150k a year? At a, you know what I mean? That yeah. had to be a pretty big company. And let's be real. At least as far as elected officials at the federal level, there's uh, five, what, 540? There's 538 between the Senate and Congress, and there's two, a VP and a president. 540 people. So it's a mid-sized company, and the lowest person there still makes $135,000 a year. That seems problematic to me, and it's your money and my money that are getting spent on that shit. So I'm not a big fan of it. i got to be honest with you. Here you go. They get paid $175,000 or $174,000 base salary <sighs> for Congress, right? Um, they work on an okay. So in 2018, they worked 174 days. The House did uh, 191 in the Senate. So they work an average of um, they work an average of 140. The House works an average of 146 days a year, and um, the Senate works an average of 165 days a year. The average American works 260 days a year. It's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think th there's a lot of problems with the way the government's structured right now. I don't think uh, – I think they should have a base salary of 50 k and whatever they save the taxpayers, then they can have the rest of that. They can have a percentage of that money they save. They do it in uh, corporate sales offices a lot. Like if you have a budget and you come in under budget, you get a certain percentage of that yeah. money back if you're the manager. I think that's a good idea. Why don't we incentivize these people actually doing their goddamn jobs instead of giving them a lifetime appointment, which is what happens in a lot of these cases when somebody's popular, even though their policies are not, and they can continue to get fundraising. Because, you know, if you can spend enough money, you can buy pretty much any local election. Let's be real about that. Unless you're wildly unpopular, you do something stupid in the press, you can probably win with just money. Uh, and, you know, that's, a, that's a, another problem with this. Um, I think the, the fact that, Congress turns over two years. There's an old saying, like you get, you get like six months maybe as president to govern because it takes a minute to get started. Your first 100 days, you're not really governing. You're just trying to make sure you make a good impression in the first 100 days. Then you start doing your policy stuff and you might get one, maybe two policy things passed in one presidency in one four-year term. And then you have to start running for reelection again. Now in Congress, shrink that down to two years instead of four. Right, so they you're talking about a couple of months of actual work weeks. out of these people, maybe, right? And then they're back on the campaign trail. They have to run for office every two years. Yeah, I don't understand why that is the case. That seems asinine to me, particularly in today's climate, where you know I'm in favor of uh, term limits for any elected official, Absolutely. including the Supreme Court. I know the Democrats were pushing this as kind of a, a way to get back at or you know try to keep Republicans from packing courts or whatever, whatever their justification was. Uh, I know that it was just political, but they're actually right there. It's insane that we would appoint someone for life. That why, what the fuck? Like we fought a war over shit like that. Well, yeah. You know what I mean? There's no, I don't give a fuck what it is. Why would we expect, like, do we really expect a judge's mental acuity and their reasoning and their relevance to modern society to be relevant still in their 80s, late 70s, 80s. Why would we expect that to happen? Nobody else in their late 70s or 80s is doing a job like that. You don't see CEOs that old. 
Like at some point, maybe if they like Warren Buffett or something like that, that keeps, but even Gates is gone. He's in his early sixties. All these guys roll out at some point because they know they, you know, they were meant for the old world. Now they're here. I don't understand. Like it's not, it's not that, it's not that jurisprudence in itself changes, but the landscape under which you apply the law changes, right? Yeah. Things change. And I don't, I just don't get it with this. I mean, you take Mitch McConnell. Mitch McConnell has been in Congress. So he's been in a senator, a uh, U.S. senator, mm. since 1985. 1985. It's uh, 35 years. 1985. And then before that, judge executive, uh, assistant attorney general. I mean, like, like the dude, that's crazy, isn't it? I mean, he's been yeah. in politics. He's been in politics since 1975. Yeah, I mean, it's... Why would you make a career out? If you make a career out of politics, then you become a good politician. And the phrase good politician is problematic in and of itself, right? Yes. So that, and that's what we're talking about here. So my thoughts, if Trump wins, obviously, I think another part of that is that there will be some regulatory environment with re- regard to the House. The House will get involved in some way and slow down a vaccine from coming. I think, I honestly believe they'll do that. And I, honestly, I think the Republicans would have done the same thing. They voted 46 times or whatever to defund uh, the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare, whatever. And they, not that they weren't right or wrong to do that. I don't give a shit about that, but they knew they didn't have the votes. They did it just to be obstructionist. And I guarantee you, oh. the Democrats in the same situation would do the same thing. If, if Trump wins, we won't know who president is before the first of the year. That's possible. I mean, there's a lot of early votes that are already in, so we'll see. But uh, I, I don't know. We'll see on our election party on November 3rd at uh, WTF Ice House here in Austin. Now, if uh, Biden wins, I fully expect the economy to start reopening almost immediately. Oh, for uh, sure. I also expect a vaccine to be ready very quickly. And this may sound conspiratorial to you, but nobody takes more money from big pharmaceutical than Democrats, uh, particularly here like Hillary Clinton. She's taken more money from them than any politician in American history. So the idea that they might hold back this vaccine to see if the Democrats get in so the Democrats can get in or so they can apply leverage in other ways uh, is not crazy to me. We see this stuff all the, especially in big pharmaceutical is basically the devil. Like it's the worst industry on earth there. It, it's, I, I, I can't imagine a worse industry other than like slave labor. You know what I mean? Yeah. So they, they are absolute shit bags in the medical and in the, uh, pharmaceutical industry. And I could totally see an organization that's that morally bankrupt doing something like, cause look, let's be real. The tech companies are doing it right now. That, that story that came out about Hunter Biden is verified. Adam Schiff's on the stump telling everybody that intelligence officials told him that it wasn't real, that it was Russian propaganda. And then the goddamn director of national intelligence had to get on television and be like, no, we didn't tell him that because there's no evidence to support what he just said. So yeah, and, and- a Senate, like the, one of the leaders in Congress is just openly lying to people about shit that's easily verifiable by the guy who's actually in that position. Yeah. And it doesn't even matter. So the, the idea that they would make stuff up and, and do things like that, totally not foreign. I would believe, I would totally, if, somebody, if there was an article today that said vaccine has been ready for two months and hasn't been put out because of XYZ, I would totally believe it. And the fact that Twitter had actually had to come out and apologize for knocking that New York Post story down, even though it was completely legitimate, and now there's more information coming out about that, is really embarrassing for them. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty bad. I mean, I mean it's pretty bad what, uh, I mean, Hunter, Hunter Biden just, I mean, he is, he is like, you know, um, first off, uh, Joe Biden is is an idiot himself, and, yeah. or whatever, and, and he he's he's enough to to screw himself up. But now he's got to try to cover for himself. And yeah, I kind of feel bad for like, for Joe. I mean, look, yeah. you can we his other kids. I mean, Bo died. He was a military guy. Uh, he was he seemed like a good dude. Mm-hmm. I'm sure. I I doubt very much that Joe Biden is a bad father. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I, just, I just don't believe that. I don't think he's a bad human being. I think at this point he's got some mental acuity problems that are that are He can't help. I mean, cascading, yeah. I mean, I don't think anything. I don't think he's talk- a bad dude. But, no. however, uh, that I, that's why I feel bad for him. The kid, Hunter, is a problem, and it's going to become a bigger problem. And there's a decent chance that he loses this election only because of Hunter's bullshit if more stuff starts coming out. And that, let's be real, unless somebody can directly tie him to stuff. And they claim they can, but people always claim that, right? Unless they can directly tie money going from Hunter to Biden, I think it would be kind of silly for him to lose for that. I think there's great reasons he should lose this election. 
that one to me seems maybe if like with the whole thing where he met with the uh, number three guy at uh, Burisma, that's a problem because he said for two years that he never saw the guy, right? They're still, they came out and denied it again. Yeah, but that's, I mean, it's demonstrably untrue what he's saying at this point. So, you know, the other thing about a potential Biden presidency is this. He's already released his tax plan. The marginal tax rate on places is going way up to 38% federally, right? So if you're one of these people that have been the backbone of the taxpayer community in places like Los Angeles, pretty much anywhere in California, actually, anywhere in California, New York state and city, um, any big, any big city, right. That isn't in Texas because there's no state income tax here. You're looking at massive rates. You're looking at 62% in California statewide. You'll get 60% in uh, New York state and 62.6% in New York city, all those wealthy people that keep those fucking uh, communities going with their tax dollars are going to leave immediately, including 50 cent who announced today he's voting for Trump. Apparently that's what I was was just, yeah, that's what I was just looking at right here. That's pretty funny. I've literally got 50 cent up right now and I'm looking, he did. He said he voted for Trump. He said, uh, he said that, uh, uh, he, um, he said he, he's voting for Trump. So Newsweek, uh, he said, uh, he said, uh, 50 cent doubles down on Trump endorsement after seeing Biden's tax plan. I don't want to be 20 cent. Yeah, of course he would say that. 50 cents hilarious, by the way. Um, um 62%. Mm-mm. So I, I, so here's what, here's what he's, uh, he tweeted. Yeah. I don't want to be 20 cent. 62% is a very, very bad idea. 62% is what they're looking at taxing. So Joe Biden's tax plan is looking at over 60% for households that make over 400000 annually. That's insane. So imagine that. Imagine you make, imagine you get that big promotion. You were making hundred grand and now you're making four hundred grand, Or it's a household. So you, you guys were both making one hundred, maybe. Maybe now you're up to four. Maybe one of the two people got a promotion. Maybe both you did. Now you're doing well, right? Now you went from paying uh, 28% of your money, right? at yeah. the federal level to now paying 38% state taxes, particularly if you're in California or something like that, state taxes are going up to you. So did you really get a raise or did you just yeah, or did take you just... on more responsibility so you could give more money to the government? Yeah. How much money exactly do these people need to do their job? You know what I mean? I if you, you need here, here's my thing. If you're a government and you need over half of the money that I earn personally to maintain what you're doing, then, then you're, you're not doing, you're the, not right doing thing. the right job. The, the federal government's job should be very simple, right? Protect us. Make sure we're, uh, we have good health care and uh, make sure that when people are, that when people need help, they get it. That's it. You're a facilitator. You're not in control of shit. When, since, it, look at the founding documents of this goddamn country. At what point did even the founding fathers who originally had all the power say that the power rested with them? The language in the Constitution speaks power into existence for the people of a country for the first time in human history saying you know what it's not about the government it's not about kings or presidents or prime ministers or any of this bullshit it's about you the people we the people we the people it's the first words written on an american piece of paper we the people that's the first fucking phrase that's ever used by an american to discuss americans and discuss how this government's going to be set up we are so far away from that um and what you don't want to be far away from is a ghost bed, by the way. You got a ghost bed, don't you? <laughs> well, listen, man. Ghost bed's where it's at. It is. Uh, I've got several. I've several. What are you doing them? Uh, sleep sometimes. Watch yeah. TV. Uh, you know, marital yeah. marital things. Yeah, I mean, look, ghost bed is all uh, marital things. Marital things, Before yeah. Before marriage. Uh, I don't believe in uh, that whole thing that you're talking about there. But marriage, yeah. Yeah. But, we, um, basically, we're just going to go out into the woods and kill a goat together, eat half the heart each, and that's going to be our ceremony. So I, I, I am a. Um, here's what here's what I would I would you know maybe propose, um, is I do the ceremony. Okay. On a ghost bed, right before we all take um, mushrooms. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, we should do the mushrooms first, then to do the ceremony. Right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, but yeah, so Ghost Beds, I mean, look, they've been a loyal sponsor uh, of, of Drinking Bros for the last four years. And yeah. now they've decided to come jump on with us. Yep. Uh, they have super comfortable mattresses. They last forever. What's really awesome is they have a, t- 
Think about this. Can you imagine somebody having a 20 year old mattress, a 20 year old mattress? No, I can't so, actually. So no. 20 year, 20 year warranty on each mattress made in the United States. The other cool part is you can try it out for 101 nights. Right. Um, so that would be like, you could, in my world, you'd have sex on it twice. Yeah. Um, and if you're not satisfied, you can just send it back. Yeah. It's a, I mean, they have great deals. They great have, deals. they have uh, a 36 month pay as you go plan which is basically no interest for 36 months on an item that's going to cost you somewhere between a thousand and 1500 bucks. Probably if you get a, unless you get adjustable bases and stuff, if you just get uh, a mattress, pillows, bed frame and things like that, like the standard stuff, even in a king size, you're looking at maybe 1500 bucks and you're paying that off over three years. That's not a whole lot of money. You know yeah. what I mean? And it's something that everybody needs. That's why I like this company so much. I also like them because they really take care of the people that take care of us. That's um, right. 30% off. Yeah, for life, for, for veterans, life. first responders, people that work for the government, teachers. nurses, teachers, any of that stuff. Anybody yep. that we came to know as quote unquote essential, and we all knew they were essential before. You know what I mean? The idea that somebody came to me like, you know what, teachers really are important. Like, what are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, no shit, Captain. The people obvious. that teach our children and, and watch them for yeah. a third of their life yeah. during the fall and, and, and winter, you, yeah. Yeah, they're probably important. Yeah, they're probably Fuck. pretty important. I, I, I didn't need them to all to stay no. home before I figured that out. No, so you can go to uh, ghostbed.com forward slash drink it bros and, uh, and get them deals. The cool part is 0% down, 0% financing, yeah. 35 bucks mm. a month. Yeah, I mean, that's it's nothing, no, man. I'm telling you. And if, you don't, if you've already got a mattress and you bought one recently, I really highly recommend these pillows. They're the, they got the best pillows in the game. Yeah. Uh, they got that cooling technology. Yeah, yeah, they got the cooling pillows. They also got like mattress protectors. The sheets are really comfortable. They got a lot of good stuff there badass man yeah. um cool so uh yeah i mean look i, I think look i think it, i think if you if you go back to so trump gets elected mm -hmm. i think i think we have i predict we have another mm -hmm. shutdown if trump gets elected yeah i mean look they're already uh england's already looking at another one in the manchester area uh so we'll see i i i'm <laughs> Hopefully, you guys who are listening to this today, because this is probably going to go out this week, will have watched the fake news from this week on Drinker Bros, which yeah. hopefully Dakota will come take part in, because I've written a section about the new California rules on, uh, on how to celebrate the holidays safely. These are government requirements, and it's the most insane list of shit ever. No, don't look it up now, because we have I'm other not, things to talk about. I'm not. But we'll get to it on uh, Thursday. So anyways... And don't hold me back, man. Try, no, quit trying to keep me down. I'm not. I'm just trying to keep you on task, you oh. fucking ADD motherfucker. Uh, so part three here is uh, taxes. So uh, CNBC reported yesterday that the top four tax rates, this is what I was mentioning before, top, top four tax rate states or areas are California, New Jersey, New York State, and then especially New York City. Uh, so remember, the top marginal fe rate for federal taxes would go up to 38% under Biden's plan. And 38%. 38%, yeah, at the federal rate. That's over, that's uh, individuals at 250, and I think uh, married people over 400 or something like that. Uh, so California's top tax rate, again, would become 62.6%. Uh, New York City would be 62%. New York State as a whole would be 58%, which is wild. Yeah. Because uh, there's a lot of, there's not a whole lot of, like upstate is, is, no, a normal state yeah you know what i mean and uh then of course new jersey 60 percent. i'm sorry man i'm gonna need an itemized bill yeah if you're trying to Before take any more than half of my fucking money yeah. i'm gonna need a bill itemized and i'll say yes or no on every single yeah. line before any of this, this is, is in insane. any way legitimate yeah people like on the left want to bring up you know after the new deal during world war ii the top marginal tax rate went up to 90 percent. well yeah we're not in a fucking world war right now yeah. are we as a matter of fact we're not in any war now. We shouldn't be. We shouldn't be. Because we're pulling out of fucking Afghanistan now. So here's the deal. Why don't you guys stop taking salaries until you pay me back all my fucking tax dollars for these two bullshit wars you made me fight? Maybe think about that. You Maybe know, think about all the TARP funds that these banks mismanaged and fucking uh, got from my tax dollars that I never saw it back. Did you see any of that money back from TARP? No. Because I sure shit didn't. I didn't get a fucking extra refund. Like, oh, they paid the government back. Bitch, you spent my fucking money on that. I didn't see anything back. You raised taxes. That's how it works. Even if it wasn't in that year, it was in the next year, the rates would go up, right? So give me a fucking break with all this bullshit. I don't understand, like, on what planet are we going to allow a bloated, incompetent government to continue to fleece us for tax dollars after all this shit. After Republicans were like, we're not going to do nation building and blah, blah, blah. That's what George Bush said all of 2000. 
all of 2000. Then as soon as the fucking attack happened, instead of doing kinetic operations like we should have, we fucking sent massive armies to two countries we didn't belong in, spent six to $10 trillion that we'll never fucking see back again. And all they did was nation build that whole time. We know they, they also say? created, they, the Republicans presided over the largest expansion of the federal government and United States history with the Department of Homeland Security. Absolutely ridiculous that anybody that voted for that bullshit back then can stand up right now and claim to be a fiscal conservative. You well, can get fucked. Well, and here, and here, I want to go ahead and throw this out there because I, I seen this day and it made, what, what's, let's ask Dan what he, he says every show. Dan, what's the only color that matters? Green. Green. China's super wealthy got $1.5 trillion richer during the pandemic that began in Wuhan with one analysis saying right. the world's never seen so much wealth created in one year. Well, what uh, matters, Dan, what matters? Green is the only thing that will ever matter. It's the, it's the root. People, people like to, to misquote that money is the root of all evil. It's the love of money. They say is the root of all evil actually, but, um, isn't that crazy? What, what's that? How's that song go? People say money is evil. Try living without it. You know what I mean? It's, it's just not the world we live in. And I'll tell you what money buys that nothing else can buy, whether it's your social status, your fame. Money buys individual liberty. It allows you to do what the fuck you want to do. And that's kind of what this country is built on. Entrepreneurship and that's individual it's liberty. Yeah. But during a pandemic... There's always profiteers. I got you. I mean, you. how many people it's got like rich war. from the wars? I got you. know what I mean? I got you. Dick Cheney, that piece of shit. Dick Cheney might be the... Honestly, people were asking me... Yeah. So we did this thing with uh, uh, Grow Your Ass Off before the show where he's shocked. I'm trying to make a pizza and he's shocking me with the tens thing on my forearms. Uh, unpleasant, by the way. But one of the questions he asked me was, who is the best president in your opinion? Like, I don't fucking know, dude. Presidents suck. But I can tell you that Dick Cheney is one of the worst human beings that's ever served in the federal government in any capacity. He that's is saying a, a lot. He is an amoral piece of shit. That's saying a lot, man. He is a giant piece of shit. He knew as well as anybody else that Iraq's chemical weapons were fucking dry. They existed for sure. We've seen him use them. We know that because we still got the goddamn receipt for selling them to him. However, those things were buried in the fucking desert and inert by the time we got there or they were gone to Syria. We knew it. We fucking knew it the whole time. Nobody... You were there early. All a bunch of my friends were. I got there a little bit later, and uh, and later was six. But there was no concerted effort after a couple of months to search for weapons of mass destruction. It was like a laughing you know what I mean? joke. It was just like, oh yeah, like there's actually a video of me pointing a rifle at a bunch of chickens in the back of a fucking car trunk, like <laughs> where are the WMDs? You know what I mean? We were making fun of it already <laughs> at that point. Uh, it's it's absolute nonsense. All this stuff. You know what I mean? Give me my money back. That's what I want. I want a refund on the last, I don't know, 50, 60 years of American and government. Think, and think about this. Like, let, let's say 62% of your income. Let's just say 60% of your income. Yeah. You don't think that you could spend it, if you had to spend that money, you don't think you could do better than a, a government spending your money? Right. I mean, you absolutely should be able to. So if you're, by the way, when you're filing your personal taxes, a lot of people will disclaim everything or they'll claim nothing and pay more taxes. Like I'll just deal with it at the end of the year. Basically what you're doing is you're taking away all your personal, you're taking away your ability for upward mobility at that point, right? So you're, you're leaving your money in the government's hands in escrow while they invested in things smart or otherwise, and you're going to get, you know, a certain amount back. But if you had that money the whole time, let's say you're paying a hundred dollars extra a week in taxes, right? $5,200 throughout the year. Every week, your purchasing power goes up by just keeping that money for yourself instead of paying in taxes and getting it back at the end of the year. Every week, you can put that money into a mutual fund that, that is growing instead of staying the same. You could, there's a million different things you could do. Don't let the government hang on to your money. So like, yeah, I, I don't- Do your taxes the right yeah, way. Yeah, I, I do them the right way because- And try to do, if you can do it, if, particularly if you're running a business and you do them quarterly, that's even better. Yeah, to so be I, that's what I do. I do mine yeah. quarterly. Um, but I, I don't, I don't want to, like, I don't, I don't let them take all that money because no. I, like, I'm not letting the government bankroll off me. No, man, man, they, they, the government is a big enough leech as it is. I think we can move on from them leeching any more from us. All right. So here's another question that came. Uh, this is from a guy that lives in, uh, Michigan, Zach Fisher. And he asked, uh, what are some of the issues that governor Whitmer, uh, who's the governor of Michigan and other governors have caused with their uh, shutdown measures. Uh, and let's be clear, it wasn't just liberals. Nope. Texas, Abbott, yep. 
Abbott shut stuff down. He really fucked with bars and restaurants really hard, particularly bars. Yep. Uh, the same, a Abbott behaved, like we don't have any proof that he falsified any, any information like the Nashville mayor did, but he behaved uh, other than that exactly like the Nashville mayor that's so hated right now did. So I have no fucking love for that guy, to be honest. Uh, it, <laughs> man, Florida's the only one that really let it ride, I think. And they seem to be doing all right, honestly. I don't know if, if COVID goes down to Florida, it's like, it's like a tough guy from your high school or something or a guy that thought he was tough showing up somewhere and then he's like, hey, who wants to fight? And everybody turns around and it's just a bunch of UFC dudes or something. Yeah. That's what COVID's like down in Florida. Like, oh, dude, we've been doing meth and fighting alligators for the last 80 years. Where have you been? Like, <laughs> what's, you think your, what's your hate take for Florida? Home? I love Florida. <laughs> I just am realistic about what it is. <laughs> Come on, man. Jacksonville is southern Georgia. Everybody knows it. Um, uh, it's, there's nothing but hillbillies there and that's I fine. Mean, listen, just that be is, who you hold are. On, hold on. That is where Jeremy May is from. Exactly. Done. Yeah. And he's walking around with a mullet right now. So <laughs> he's, and he's a, and he's a UFC, UFC fighter. fighter. Yeah. Case yeah. closed. Um, <clears throat> just to answer the question, let's start at the beginning. The essence of uh, capitalism is the individual's ability to make their own living, whether it's farming and trading their crops for sh other shit that they need back in the day, or whether it's actually selling it direct to consumer now and using the money however you want. That is the essence of capitalism and to operate uh, within the rules and under protection of a government that does its job and then stays out of the way for the rest of it. That is, that is the American dream, as they call it, right, is to be able to make your own way, not depend on anybody else and be able to do, you know, more or less what you want to. Obviously, a lot of effort goes into that. And sometimes people get lucky. Sometimes people get unlucky and things don't work out. But for the most part, I feel like you got a good shot here. Now, here's what we know about the shutdown effect so far. And these numbers are two weeks old, so they could be much larger now. But about 400,000 businesses have closed since the shutdowns began. This is nationwide. And 60% uh, of them will never reopen. 60% of those 400,000, that's 250 or so thousand businesses, a quarter million businesses owned by private Americans that will never, ever reopen again. Which means, I don't know if any of you out there have ever started a business. Um, usually you put a lot of your own money into it. Yep. And you don't know if you're going to see a return or not. And then after a while, you do see a return. Things start to go well, and all of a sudden, this happens, and your business goes down. You've lost everything. Every your entire time. life savings are gone. You have to go back and do some other job that maybe you were doing before or find a new career, which is even more difficult. And all these bills that are getting deferred right now because you can't get evicted or can't get this or can't get your power shut off or your lights or water, all those bills are coming due as soon as this stuff is over. You know what I mean? And it's going to cause a huge bubble this is a real problem, and I'll tell you what businesses aren't closing. Amazon, Google, large uh, clothing manufacturers, large restaurant chains. None of them are closing. The Cheesecake Factory is not going anywhere. It's going to exist. But the mom and pop shop on your corner that they spent their whole life working on and they were going to turn it over to their kids, that shit's gone now. And that human being has now lost their ability to make a living for themselves. They've lost their ability to any sort of upward mobility unless they jump back into a system that's not done well for them so far. Yeah, yeah I mean, and what are we going to do to help help them? Well, I'll tell you what I do. Like, I was downstairs at uh, the coffee shop the other day, right? Just buying random shit for us, coffees and, and some, I don't remember what it was, some food. Um, <clears throat> guy hands me the check, and uh, I fill it out, and he's like, Can't, it wasn't a check, it was um, like the iPad, right? hands me the iPad, like, what do you want to tip? And I pushed whatever the highest one right now for, for restaurant people, push the highest one because that industry is fucked right now. Yeah. And I can afford to do that. Yep. I'm lucky. I'm fortunate enough to be able to do that. And he goes, are you sure about that? I'm like, yeah, dude, times are tough for you guys. Like this is, there's a way that if you're in a good position, you can help people. And that's what we should expect. If you, you shouldn't, I, we shouldn't feel weird the about American asking. Party is. Yeah. You shouldn't feel weird about asking for help and you damn sure shouldn't hesitate to give it. I've, come up with a motto after <clears throat> a lot of years, like I, I get in my own head a lot cause I'm a heady guy, but I come up with, came up with a motto that if I think something good, I don't hesitate to say it. And if I think something bad, I think about it for a minute and see if I should say it or not. That's a tough thing to train yourself to do. You, you hesitate when you're going to say something bad. That's why the bad things I say are very well thought out. Yeah. Oh, I got you. Yeah. Okay. But I still say them obviously. Yeah. yeah I, I was about to say, I don't, first. I don't know. Like, yeah. I don't, I don't usually, I don't usually see like if we were trying to get a time on the difference between the good things you say versus the bad things, I don't know that they'd be off, but like 0.001 of a second. No, it's, it's, uh, you know, my brain Works operates fast. really quickly. Yeah, yeah. Obviously faster so than mine. 
I, I would just on, along that line though, with people needing help and things like that, the shutdowns also led to a lot of isolation. It's, it's put a bunch of people back into their homes and places like we, one of the things we know about, uh, veterans, especially. And one of the reasons Jared started drinking bros in the first place is because men and women will serve their country under extreme stress for a while. And stress requires one understanding from the people around you and two, some decompression time. They jump right back into a VA system that wasn't ready to handle them. And they go back home where nobody understands what it means to be awake for three days, wondering if you're going to die. Yep. Right. And it's a, that that may sound like hyperbole. I promise you that it's not, you know, as well as anybody. And that shit, that high stress environment for a prolonged period of time, in my opinion, is the biggest cause of post-traumatic stress in military veterans, especially. I mean, it's hard. It's hard to like throttle down. Like when your body, yeah. your body is like, so your body adapts, your mm -hmm. body adapts to everything. And so no matter what, like, it's kind of like what you're around, like your body will adapt to the environment you know, like I think sometimes, like look at all the times we used to drink back when we were in, and, and yeah. still go work out. Wake and up at 5 a.m. and still run. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, you know, you could do that because that was what you're surrounded by, right? Yeah. I mean, we are, we are habit, you know, like habitual people, right? Like we, we adapt and, and become habits and, and blah, blah, blah. Mm. And, and, you know, it's, it's, um, yeah, I mean, you know, it's the same thing with us coming home. It's it's it takes a minute to get a stride back into. And so I think right now, you know, we're used to go, 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 go. And now mm -hmm. the country slowed down. Yeah. The world's different. We're all trying to, you know, instead of never being at home and being out, you know, whether going to kids soccer all the way from oh, everything. Yeah. Right. Kids soccer games to to picking them up from mm -hmm. school, to getting mm -hmm. them out the door for school, for going to work, yeah. traveling, like all these all things. Stuff, yeah. You know, now we're all stuck at home and it's like yeah. it's, it's 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 almost the. I wouldn't say it's a, it's not the same. It's thing. similar though. It's definitely yeah. you definitely they definitely correlate to the same issues. I don't know about you, but one of the things that I ha personally had a big issue with when I first got back was impatience and barking at people. Like I'm used to, I gotta send some fucking privates through that door and kill everybody on the other side. And if anybody hesitates, we all die. Can't allow it to happen. Yeah. So a more aggressive tone and behavior is <laughs> warranted, right? It makes sense there. But you, like you said you you that becomes part of your life at that yeah. point so when you get home and like your mom's like hey you want to you want to go over here i'm like yeah let's go and she's like hold on i gotta get ready i'm like motherfucker you don't don't ask me like i would get mad about it or if she was like walking slower and anybody around me like and i this <laughs> the one where people stand in doorways and shit still gets me yeah like because my brain w one of my uh team leaders yelled the word fatal funnel or the phrase fatal funnel into my ear so loud one time that it'll never escape my brain it's just bouncing around in there forever uh, like a like a particle in the la large hadron collider or something like that. So, anybody standing in a doorway or in an entryway and they're not moving out of the way to let people by or getting out of the fucking way, that <laughs> shit still to this day drives me crazy. Well, at least but I know how to drive you crazy. All this stuff with uh, like we were already heading in the wrong direction with social isolation uh, because of you know all these stupid digital devices that we have in our face all the time now and. This, I believe, has, for some people, taught them some coping mechanisms. Like, it, it became more normal for people to be on FaceTime and shit or to be doing Zoom calls with their friends instead of just, like, if you couldn't hang out. Usually back in the day, like, you know, especially with military people, we won't, some of the guys you serve with, you wouldn't see them for, like, five, seven, ten years, and you show back up, and it's like you've been together yeah. this entire time. And I think a lot of people are like that. Yeah. People build deep bonds. Um, but... Now yeah. I feel like people are, are uniquely situated with all the digital stuff to take advantage of it, but I don't think a lot of people are. You can see it. You can see how truly lonely people are in the most lonely environment on earth, and that is in Hollywood, right? None of those people like or trust each other. They're all like trying to climb ladders or be PC or be whatever the fuck they're trying to be. I don't think any of them trust each other. I think it's a, like just a complete viper pit out there. Yeah. And you can see it now. All this stupid shit that people are doing for publicity on TV, like these these vote campaigns and stuff like that where they're all naked. Like, are you kidding me? This is the most cringy shit I've ever seen, dude. So why what do we do? Shut up. So what can we do? <sighs> you know, I know first thing that helps me when I'm, when I'm down, when you're doing your marital duties. Yeah. You know, like whenever, when whenever you're doing I, puzzles, whenever I, the code likes to do puzzles, guys, I do. I do I puzzles. What, I think that might be code for something. It's not, it's actually not, I don't believe um, it. Um, but yeah, I mean, so we also, this, this episode was also brought to you by 
Roman. Oh yeah, Roman. Uh, you 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 do you ever taking those Roman pills? Oh yeah, every day. Every day? No, not every day. Before the show? No, but I feel uh, like you could probably figure it out where you could take a certain amount every day and you would just be at peak hardness forever. Really? I think that that seems like science, right? Let like it's ask. it's a chemical that burns off in your system at a particular rate. It's got a half life just like any other element or chemical, right? Let me ask you this. What? What if we talked to Roman and we got one of those diabetic pumps that was on us and insulin it automatic pump. it's like an insulin pump. Yeah. Right? And you ha we had it on us and it was just automatically injecting yourself with it so you didn't have to worry about it so you could stay at peak performance at all time. I think that would be a great experiment, yeah. Yeah, I'm in. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll sign up to be. Uh, but I think human nature has, uh, at least at this point, I don't know if, if this is a chicken or egg argument, but I don't think women are necessarily wanting to get pounded on all the time like that. Like at some point they're going to need a break. They're like, hey, dude, relax and let me fucking do the dishes. And I like, mean, I can't. I could do it while you're doing the dishes, God damn it. I mean, if you, you know can I mean? find one that'll do it more than once a week, I mean, you've hit the jackpot. Uh, yeah, I'm fucking a lottery winner then at that point. Shit. Uh, yeah, not, I have no complaints. Uh, <laughs> I like not reading. with yourself. I like, no, definitely not with myself. Yeah. Definitely yeah. not with myself. I am amazing at masturbation. Yeah. Like I, if it was in the Olympics, I would win every year. You think so? Oh yeah. Gold medal. Um, uh, I would be at least top three. You know, judges have to watch and score. <laughs> they, if they can maintain eye contact with me through the whole thing, yeah. then that's good for them. But I make intense eye contact. You do all the time, yeah. Yeah, I was like, I was actually, uh, I was actually writing on the uh, show y'all had earlier. Mm -hmm. I mean, I couldn't imagine having sex with you, like, cause I, I like your face, like looking you in the eyes. I would have to close my eyes the whole time. Yeah, like this. I, just like, like this is how I do it. I'm just like mean mugging you the whole yeah, time. Yeah, I, I would, I'd open my eyes, and you'd just be mean mugging me. Yeah, I, that's how it works. So yeah, maybe um, some people like it. Apparently, I guess. I don't thank know. you for your service. Uh, you don't want to go to a doctor for this shit though no. telemedicine that's another thing that's come out of all this coronavirus bullshit telemedicine's gotten huge and it's made my life a lot simpler i don't know about you but i've definitely not gone to doctor's appointment ne not necessarily out of embarrassment which is something with erectile dysfunction a lot of people don't go because they're embarrassed about it well i was uh, going to go in and talk to my doctor about it one time i was, I was thinking about bringing yeah. it up and uh like my doc like this this was back my doctor he was old mm -hmm. and like all this shit I was going to go in and just be like, hey, man, like, what do you think about about maybe some, you know, ED medicine? Mm -hmm. And, um, man, he sent in his hot, of course. like, his hot, I don't know if she's a physician assistant or whatever, uh, yeah. but to come in and deal with me that day. That's how you know life is, uh, this is all a simulation. I couldn't, I couldn't do it. You could not have planned that. Yeah, and people won't do it. But even then, the time it takes, if you're a, a busy person, yeah. taking – that amount of time, because when have you ever been to a doctor's appointment where it went as scheduled? Not Never. once ever, right? So taking the time out of your day to do that stuff, uh, and then you know you end up making the excuses. People want to feel uh, affection. Like if you're with somebody particularly, and one of their love languages is physical touch, and you just seem not turned on all the time, that's how they receive love. So they're gonna think you hate them, even if everything else is perfect. You just can't allow for that shit. You know what I mean? There's yeah. scientific ways to deal with it. This is definitely one of them. Uh, you need a healthy sex life. You don't want to be pent up. Pent up people wear, uh, like, uh, they wear weird black clothes and How long do you paint take their them? nails and stuff. And they usually, yeah, I mean, and usually they go join Antifa. Yeah. Yeah, they're um, incels. Involuntarily celibate is what incel means, by the way, if you didn't know. And then let me ask you this. Do you, um, how long do you take, like, I mean, when you take your Roman before you're about to do the deed. Um, I'm not kidding when I say I'm on it all the time. <laughs> like I, I experiment to figure out how much I need to be on. Like how many, how much do I need to take every certain amount of days to always be ready to fuck? You know what I yeah. mean? Are you going to blush Dakota? Jesus Christ. Uh, so you, yeah, so I you, try. I tried <laughs> to stay on it all the time. Yeah. You know, just because I, I, how many do you got to take a day? Not many a day. Not no. no, not even every day. No. Oh, not every day. No. Oh. And it depends on your per personal body chemistry. That's why I'm, you go on Roman. You do the free evaluation. You talk to a doctor, right? Yeah. They uh, will decide whether or not this is from the comfort of your home. You can do it through Zoom calls. You can do it through chat. However you want to do it. Do you it. have to show them your dick? No, okay. I don't think that would be relevant. Yeah. I mean, if they asked to see your dick, then maybe show them. I guess he's a doctor. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know I, what to tell you. I but, mean, I uh, would. 
they'll, they'll figure out what the best treatment plan for you is. And then you'll, like any other drug you ever take, you got to kind of dial in the dosage on a little bit. Yeah. So they'll ask you if you've ever taken it before, what the experience was like, things like that. They ask really good questions. Um, it uh, shows up in a discrete package, right? So your uh, wife and kids, your dogs, maybe, <laughs> cats. If you have cats, you're probably not buying ED drugs, let's be yeah, real. True, You're true. probably just sitting around petting your cats all day. Yeah. Uh, no offense to you cat owners out there, no, but no, no cats are pointless. Uh, anyways, you can go in and uh, complete an online evaluation today and go ahead and do this stuff go to uh get roman.com forward slash american yeah that's so, right and, and, and me and dan to, are now helping you get laid yeah you'll get up to 50 dollars off your first month of ed treatment you get a free online visit and it's free two-day shipping pretty much on all the orders uh that's get roman.com slash american for up to 50 bucks off your first month of ed depending on how much you spend get roman.com slash american and who else would have American other than us, obviously? Absolutely. Because we... Roman is American. It is a very American company, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, boners are... I think there's there's nothing more American than a than a big old boner. With a, I mean, and, and technically, after you took Roman and you used their code, that's called mm. an American boner. Uh, yeah, you can refer to it as an American boner at that right? point, yeah. I feel like. So maybe go get tattooed. Yeah. Get a flag tattooed on that dick. Maybe don't do that, actually. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. probably a bad idea. Uh, so le let's get on to the uh, next question. This one's from Travis Starleton, uh, S-T-A-R-L-E-T-O-N. I don't know how to say that. Hopefully I'm saying it right. He asks how the, ma the silent majority can voice their opinions in such a way that would mitigate the drastic response, which, which that's his words. And what, what, what I assume he means by that is the politicization, politicization of pretty much everything in American politics. Yeah, it's called politics. Got it. But some things where politics find their way, they sneak their way into these issues, it's like, this is not a political issue. Nope. This is not a partisan issue in any way. This is just like everybody kind of agrees this needs to get done, so let's just do it, mm -hmm. right? Even people on the left right now, for example, are like, hey, Nancy, why didn't you accept that deal to get money in the pockets of the American people? No, I think that these uh, bailout funds are basically – we're paying ransom right now. We're paying yeah, for sure. We're paying these people who have kept us shut down ransom at this point. Let's be fucking real about that. The government isn't giving you money. They're not giving you money. They're giving you your money. Somebody yeah. cannot give you your money. That is not how that works. That's how, not how ownership works. Uh, the rights of man might be a book you should look into at some point. Uh, I, I'll tell you what you can do first though. This is a good question. What can we do? as a silent majority. Now, if you're listening to this show, there's a decent chance that you, you may be your center right, center left, maybe your center center, but you're definitely not an extremist in one yeah. of these political parties. So I'll tell you what you can do first is challenge yourself. Get that plank out of your eye before you start looking for splinters and everybody else's or slivers or whatever it is. Uh, and I would, I would say challenge not just what you believe, but challenge how you think. And it's gonna have two effects. One. Uh, skepticism is going to become an instinct for you. And in today's world where there's no legitimate media, no legitimate news source, skepticism is the only way that we actually have a chance at finding the truth as a group of people. It's the only way we have. Uh, then uh, begin challenging other people's beliefs. Um, you don't need to be a dick about it, but you also shouldn't waver. You shouldn't be a pushover when it comes to the truth. Yeah, believes uh, in something. Yeah, my personal strategy is to ask people questions that I know they can't answer. So one of my favorites right now to ask is Biden supporters. Tell me why you're voting for Joe Biden in a paragraph that doesn't include the words Donald or Trump. <laughs> and if you can't do that, then That's you good. really need to reevaluate what the fuck you're thinking right now. Not only what you're thinking, but how. And uh, you know, it works pretty much every time. Usually the person is forced with reworking their own argument and I'll learn from that. Uh, and it'll typically make them look at the issue completely differently. And then sometimes they convince me I was wrong and we're all better for that. Anytime anybody is proven wrong and then they adapt to right, everybody just got a little bit better. Yeah. Like it should, this should not be an egotistical issue. You should not have an ego injury by yeah, being like, wrong. Why would you have an ego when it comes to being a Republican? Like imagine Democrat? somebody fucking, imagine someone <laughs> I, I, I imagine someone being too proud 
to admit that one plus one does not equal three. It's like, nah, man, come on. Nah. Yeah. Like, what the fuck are you talking about, dude? Uh. And that's a, obviously an extreme example, but there is. There are truth. absolute truths. There are in this. absolute, there are absolute yeah. and truths yeah. in this. And everything does add up. You just have mm. to be willing to find the equation, right? Mm. I mean, politics is nothing more than, I mean, you know, I, I, politics is nothing more than, than just some crazy ass algebra. Yeah. It all adds up though. You know, when you get down and you start looking at, at all this, it, it all adds up. I'll tell you one thing, man. I, um, what do you think about George Friedman? What about him? So, uh, you got to read this book. We, uh, we talked about it in church this weekend. This guy brought it up and, uh, uh he, re- he wrote this book called the next hundred years. Okay. Wrote it in 2009, George Friedman. Um, he's, a uh, um, Hungarian guy. Yeah. So he's an internationally recognized geopolitical forecaster and strategist. Let me tell you something. You read this book. There's some excerpts we pulled out uh, for church this this week, uh, this Sunday, Mm. and he predicted 2020. And so what George Friedman says is, he says you have to, the reason our politics by, so he he says that, so he breaks the world down into, uh, or, or America down into 50 year segments. Okay. So we are in the middle of a 50 year cycle right now. And he predicted everything that's going on. And so what George says is that the reason things are so crazy is that we're in the middle of this segment. And if you look back, it was the same way the last 50 years. Right. And he says it repeats its cycle. Um, He said that America is rising to the superpower. And the reason it's so crazy right now with politics for us is because we are leading the way. Right. And that. And that, and it's because we are own because we were we were we were made in 1776. We were we were so young, and that's why our politics are so. But he says they work. He says right. they work. Right. The process does the typically pr- work. The most process of the time, yeah. does work. So. And we're seeing it work. By the way, when when you if you're taking medicine or something like that, and or let, let me let me rephrase. Let's say you get cut, right? You get a cut on your arm or something. It gets red around there you start getting pus you get a fever that it's that sucks yep. but that is your body working mm-hmm. that is white blood cells attacking that shit to heal it so it, maybe it sucks yeah but it's doing what it's supposed to do and right now i think in america we're pretty close we we could there's something we could be doing right now man we're close this, this process that we're going through this pain that we're going through right now is really important we're not handling it right though we need to be doing well, this we need to be having these discussions right now so he predicted middle of cycle 2020 mm that we would have social unrest all the way up until it's like, I think you predicted till 2030, 2035, um, because we're developing right. our social, our social piece of us. Right. What he did state was, is that, did you know that, it, uh, did, do you know who, did you know the United States controls a hundred percent of all the oceans? Controls in what way? You mean we have naval we, superiority? Naval superiority, a hundred percent of the oceans, sure, yeah. right? So therefore we control the world. And in a lot of ways. Yeah. And, and so, um, you know, we, we are a threat to China and all these other countries and we're getting ready to take over power. And he, like, if you read this for me, uh, with some of these excerpts that were pulled out, I mean, it kind of gave me comfort that we're going to be all right. Yeah, I think we'll be fine. I mean, and it comes down to part of the process for sure. This is part of the process. And, And again, we'll discuss some more stuff that you can do. So <clears throat> let's talk about what we were just getting into there. What, what not to do, what not to do is to isolate yourself. Yes. Uh, and particularly not in your own beliefs. We don't get better when we don't learn. We don't get better when we're arguing over semantic shit while yeah. being robbed blind by our government and corporate assholes. We don't get better unless we communicate again. And this whole PC nonsense is, uh, in my opinion, absolute poison to real communication. We reject it. I reject this PC shit wholeheartedly. I fucking think it's the dumbest shit I've ever seen. And it's not just to buy a license to be crude or crass or rude or any of that shit or be a dick about it. It's because we see the danger of not communicating. Absolutely. Right? We aren't always going to come to an agreement, but we can move in that direction each time a little bit more, right? And, and it's like the infantry thing I said before, continually improve your fighting position. Always, as a human being, you should always be continually trying to improve, whether it's your person, uh, professionally, 
uh, spiritually, if you're into that, your relationships, you should all be trying to get close to your children, your family, your, your uh, significant other, all that stuff. This is not and should not be a radical statement, by the way. Mm-hmm. The idea that it is, yeah. the idea that, it's, that people turn their nose up at just having a conversation where we can be blunt and I can say something that's stupid or offensive and if I say it to be stupid or offensive and it's funny, maybe I get away with it. But if I say it, and if I only say it to be a dick, then sure, bring on the consequences, right? It's about the intent behind it. Yeah. If I'm saying it because it's what I think is true based on the evidence I've seen, or if because I come from some fucking ignorant background and I haven't been taught that yet, or I slipped into the same trap that many Americans do, which is to believe shit I see on the internet that's not true or believe these politicians that are clearly lying to us every single day, then yeah, I mean, you have to show a little bit of understanding for that. It doesn't help to fucking stomp people in the ground for what they believe. What helps is, I mean, think about it this way. Your child comes to you and says, dad, uh, look what I made. And it's a piece of shit, right? But it's your kid. You don't tell them it's a piece of shit. If your kid comes and be like, Hey dad, doesn't one plus one equals three. You're like, no, it's actually two, and here's how you fucking well, I'd show Well, I tell them it's a piece of shit. Yeah, you would, yeah. I do. Yeah. Like, I never let my kids beat me at anything no, no, no. unless they win. For sure. They should absolutely earn everything. I'm yeah. just saying you don't have to be rude about it. No, There's a no, way to no. say something sucks No, but you can say, hey, it's, it it's really not that good. Yeah. Yeah, like, hey, why don't you try this? Like, you yeah. should always th- – th- I, I think I mentioned this um, maybe in episode one, but uh, that book uh, – I can't remember the name of it, actually, but it's um, – the problem something child or something like that but it's written by james dobson who is from a super religious organization uh and i am not religious in any way yeah, but one of the religious. things one of the th- yeah one of the th- things he said was uh the more often you catch your child doing the right thing the less often you'll catch him doing the wrong thing there's nothing better than positive reinforcement positive reinforcement is not however lying to the kid yes. and tell them they're good when they're not good and that's you know what, what I mean? pl- that's what political correctness is right yeah like a, like in exactly. a relationship when like some- fat like, fatness is a body type yeah it's not a well, body type no yeah, i mean like have no. you seen mine we're talking about morbidly yeah, obese I mean, people rounds of shape being though. fashion and fashion magazines and all these companies are like yeah we're going to add some plus size models why are we no no offense i mean maybe you've got some kind of condition but if you didn't before you're definitely going to have diabetes afterwards For sure. like you are killing yourself right now and i'm not going to applaud you while you're doing it i'm going to no. say something because i actually give a shit if you live or die. Yeah. People that are fucking surrounding you with applause as you're murdering Buying your own into your body. Bullshit. That fat is not a body type. Yeah. Fat is a body type in the same way that Somalia is a functional It's no government. different than somebody looking at an alcoholic and saying, well, you know what? Hey, they had a hard life. Yeah. Yeah. Just constantly making excuses. And that's what we do, particularly that's the people closest to us, because we're afraid at this point to say anything that might offend somebody because people aren't used to being offended. People should be used to being offended. Not when you I got friends able- like you, Dan. Yeah, well, you, you get it every day. You should, <laughs> you should be able to be offended by something and process that information. And when you're offended, by the way, if you're offended by something you hear or see, the very first thing, unless it's something egregious like murder or fucking rape or something like that, obviously, uh, I hate that I even have to caveat that. But if you hear or see something that offends you, the first thing you should ask yourself is what was the intent of what that person was doing right then? If you don't, if that's not the first thing you're asking yourself, then you're just walking around looking for landmines to step on and you're Man, doing it on that's, purpose. That's, that's exactly where I, like, I live my whole life by intent, right? Mm. It, like, I look at everybody, people, look, people are going to piss you off, people are going to let you yeah. down, people are going to offend you. Get done, right? But, like, I look at their intent. Were, were you trying to offend me to be an asshole? Were you offending me because you just didn't know what to say? Yeah. Was it was it was it was it, was it malicious? But even if you were trying it, to be an asshole, were you having a bad day? Did I did I do something? Did yeah. I did I walk in? Because I always think back about that shit. Is there something about their facial expression or the way they were standing or the way they answered me earlier in text before I saw them in person that should have indicated to me yeah. that they were having a bad just day? Think, and it should like if somebody's having a bad day and then you get butt hurt when they react negatively, you look, man. Maybe once or twice you can do that, but at some point, if you really care about that person, you need to learn. You need to learn how to tell when they're in a situation like that. We can't all be a hundred percent all the time, and you need support like that when somebody's having a bad fucking day. So, Dan, what's some good shit you've heard or seen lately? Here's uh, I've actually got a list. It's funny. It's funny you asked that. I have a list. Yeah, I just want to know. Of um, I found this website. I can't remember what it is, but I found it the other day, and I was just copying and pasting articles from it. Um, I was just looking for some inspirational shit, uh, because actually it started with, I saw 
somebody posted a clip of John Krasinski, the good news show that he was doing for, I don't think they're doing it anymore, but, um, probably ran out of it. Yeah, probably. Yeah. But, uh, this, these, this particular site was all about police saving people's lives. Uh, and let's see, um, Earlier this week, uh, police pulled a man off Trump Tower after he dangled off the ledge. He was demanding uh, to speak for, to Trump. Yeah, he was demanding to speak to Trump. Uh, National City, which is uh, around San Diego, police. Corporal Javier Corneo. Javier, Javier. Corneo. Javier. I don't Javier know. How, Javier. Javier. Javier Cor- Lopez. Corneo. Corneo, yeah. Uh, jumped, in- jumped into the ocean to save a man who had fallen off a jet ski. Um, last week, Caseyville Police Department officer uh, Travis. What is that? Hogan. Hogan. Hoget saved a choking infant using infant CPR. Wow. Uh, in uh, Lilburn, Ger- Georgia, police officer Alameden, uh, and I can't, there's no way I'm saying his no name. Way. It's A J A N Ajanovic. 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 Or Ajanovic, maybe. Where'd you get uh, these names? Uh, just from the paper. Uh, he uh, last week ran into a burning, so a train crashed. He ran into a burning train to save both conductors, and then he returned afterwards to make sure no one was left on the train. Now, does that sound something like maybe you did yeah. at some point? We could do a whole show. Man. I, I, I stopped at three because I realized I could, we, could, we would just go off on a tangent. We could do the whole show. We could do a show every single day just about the good shit that police officers do every day. And first yeah, responders man. do every day. So if you're out there and you feel like the police don't care, they do. I understand the perception nationally, and and maybe your personal experience has led you to, to that belief. Maybe the experience of uh, maybe the experience of your parents or grandparents, that stuff that they went through before, um, and maybe it's still happening in some areas now. We don't really know, to be honest. Like we try to look out for that shit. I mean, look, there's bad everywhere. There's, right? there's, there's bad, bad everywhere. everywhere, and there's probably some lower level systemic badness as well. Right. But I'll there tell probably, you this. There's probably some departments that are that have problematic views on race. They're yeah. probably there. I, I would uh-huh. not probably there are definitely. Yeah, that definitely exists in this country. But that's not data. It's a subjective view on an empirical situation. And when you start attacking the infrastructure of this thing that's working almost everywhere just because it's affecting you negatively, yep. that isn't the way a good person behaves. Now, I understand the frustration and I understand as, as well as anybody else. When a problem is affecting you, it seems like the biggest problem in the world. You know what? And to you it is. And I understand that. I would challenge you to look at things uh, uh, from a statistical, a statistical standpoint because that's simply untrue in a, in, a, in a wider view. And there's much more good than bad. And while we hate the bad as much as anyone else, I, would, I, I want these people to start waking up and not throwing the baby out with a bathwater. You know what I mean? Like, realize what these people are doing for you every let's day. Let's do Look, look, if we, we have every right to, to, to pick out the bad, but let's do our own, our own, um, let's, let's give them, look, they're all out there trying to serve us. Yeah. And let's, let's at least give them the benefit of the doubt. And let's at least at a minimum, consciously, let's don't, let's don't wrap them all up in the one category. Right. Let's, let's consciously go through and let's say, hey, you know, yeah, that one's a shitty one, but you know what? I got 10 yeah. of them over here. I guarantee you for every bad one, there's a hundred good ones. Yeah, there has to be. Otherwise, we wouldn't be functioning as we, a society. We wouldn't be a free you country. I mean? Yeah. So I, I would, yeah, I would say the same. Definitely look for the good stuff. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, if you want, if you genuinely want police officers to hold each other accountable, you have to empower them to do so. Coming after people, canceling people, being unreasonable, not waiting for the results of investigations and, and all this other stuff and, and footage and all this stuff. You are creating a scenario where these people are hyper vigilant, not necessarily about what they're doing on the street, but about what's coming for them in the media. Yes. And that is a problem. They have to be able to serve. Now, I don't think that I don't I personally have mixed feelings about qualified immunity. We can talk about that on a later show. But you do if you're expecting someone to do a hard job like that and you're expecting them to do it professionally, you're expecting them to do it with a fucking smile and make sure they don't overreact to things, then you better damn sure support them. Absolutely. Yeah, because if not, because if you take away the only thing that's the only thing that's worse than, than picking out the bad ones is not giving any incentive to be a good one. Yeah. Right. Yep. Um, because then it's already hard enough to be in an organization uh, with bad ones. But yeah. Then if, if you don't have any incentive or support for yeah. the bad ones, if they feel like they get this, like, what is the benefit to being a good one? Right. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm totally with you, man. Well, listen, we got another one out the door, man. Yep. Hey, Dan. You're the man. Thanks. I do what I can thank for the you. peoples. Thank you for your service, man. Uh, you know, I did it all for you specifically. Yeah. Hey, you know what? And, and I, I would just recommend, I know we're going to put this, it's going to be on YouTube as well. Yeah. If you guys got any questions or anything like that, 
um, wh where do you want them to go? Like maybe go to either our YouTube or uh, we can check YouTube and we can check the uh, the uh, Instagram American yeah, Podcast. Put it, put Party. it in the comments. You can uh, send us stuff on Instagram, comments. American Party Podcast. Yeah. Well, eventually we'll get a Facebook page as well. But honestly, I hate Facebook. Yeah, I do so too. We'll and, get a website. Yeah, uh, we'll get a site soon. And now. Uh, and, and look, like any questions you got, we, we look. We'd love to challenge it. Um, if you guys, we're going to start doing, I think we're going to start having one segment where we bring people up in live. Yeah. Um, so to do some, you know, some questions and stuff like that. Uh, I think the other thing is if you've got any badass stories, uh, please send them to us, uh, send them to us and yeah, we, send we, us we some definitely good news. love to share some good news. Uh, that's, that's going to be our end segment right there. All right. Well, listen, thank you all for tuning in. We really appreciate the support and Dan, you look good. Thanks.